<clears throat> Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here and um, to introduce to you the fantastic world of spaghetti proteins, how they evolved in, in aging, and how we can use structural biology to provide new cures for age-related diseases. So I guess most of you, I mean, I'm, I'm chemist, so I like cooking, have um, the feeling when, when you want to try whether spaghetti are al dente and uh, you can catch them with a fork, they slip away. If you think that is difficult, you have to imagine um, drugging an intrinsically disordered protein, so that's way, way more complicated. But let's first go back in time about 35 years. So it's the uh, mid of the 1980s, um, time of mixtapes, weird clothes and, uh, and hairstyles. I went to primary school and after school I spent a lot of time at my, at my grandparents' place. So it was really, really wonderful. And there, my favorite dish was, well, that would be too obvious. It was alphabet soup. But not because I like the taste of, of alphabet soup. Um, so, for those of you who have been in um, uh, yeah, day schools, it, it, you get it very often and you don't like it any longer at some point. I liked it a lot because I was so fascinated by the properties of the noodles. So I can spend hours um, playing with the noodles, arranging them. They were so flexible and soft and, of course, also difficult, difficult to grab. So very special properties. Time goes by, I go to uh, high school. Um, I learn about amino acids, and amino acids build up proteins, and proteins are essential, start in st uh, studying chemistry as, um, along with, with other things, and then started uh, getting in touch with uh, structural biology. What a fascinating topic. So in structural biology, we learned that proteins adopt a defined three-dimensional structure that we can use this structural knowledge to develop drugs. Overall, we learned that structure defines function. Now, when I finished my PhD and I started my, my PhD, pro uh, my, my, when I finished my master's, started my PhD project, I started working on uh, bacterial antitoxins. And these are promising class of proteins for antibiotics research. All the structural biology techniques, classical approaches failed back then, so I turned to a new uh, technique for me, NMR spectroscopy, and that revealed to be the key for, us, for, for studies of this antitoxin. Now, when I looked at this antitoxin CCDA using NMR spectroscopy, I realized there's something wrong with this protein. Only half of it is actually folded, and the rest is disordered. So what does this mean? These parts of the proteins are fully flexible. They are like spaghetti wobbling around. So I looked into the literature and indeed there were some reports saying that some of the bacterial proteins, they contain disordered regions. Reading further, I found out that actually more than 40% of the human proteome is intrinsically disordered. But back then, structural biologists were of a common idea that that's junk in the human proteome. So these regions are there, they don't have a spe specific function, they are eaten up by, by proteases, like we eat up spaghettis. So, but why does nature then invest so much energy in producing these, these intrinsically disordered regions? Yeah, I defended my PhD, um, went abroad to Germany, Netherlands, and then started my own lab, and there I got interested in age-related diseases. So I started reading into the literature um, about age-related diseases. So it's clear, I think, for everyone that when we age, there's more and more diseases coming up. So at the age of 70, more than 50% of all women have um, age-related disease like diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disorders, neurodegenerative diseases or cancers, and even more than 60% uh, than men. So what are actually the mechanisms driving aging and age-related um, diseases. So there are several key mechanisms, um, for example, removal of cellular waste. So if there's problems with garbage disposal, then um, what we get 
is neurodegenerative disorders. If there are problems with uh, the regulation of cellular switches, the so-called um, epigenetic alterations, distortions in uh, post-translation modifications, we can also get age-related diseases, as we get when we encounter damage of our DNA. The last part in particular is very interesting because when we encounter da damage in our DNA, several things can happen. So either the damage is repaired or the cell dies. But I have to say there's also a state in between. Um, there's a stage between life and death. And these cells, these zombie cells, they are also called senescent cells, they stay, they accumulate over age, and they pose a real problem for our organism because they prevent regeneration of the tissue which is surrounding. They send off inflammation signals. They are the source of cancers and they are also involved in many other diseases like neurodegeneration or atherosclerosis. Now, when I started reading into the key players of these different processes, one, struck, uh, one thing struck my mind. Actually, in most of these or not all of these processes, the spaghetti proteins are involved. One protein stuck out in particular, and that's P53. P53 is normally known as the guardian of the genome, so it protects us from d um, DNA damage. So if cells encounter DNA damage, this protein ensures that these cells stop dividing. But on the other hand, this protein P53 also poses a problem because it's exactly the factor that keeps these zombie cells alive. So it helps us, helps uh, our, our body to cope with DNA pro repair problems, but on the other hand, it also helps to keep these zombie cells alive and poses a problem while we age. So now, can we, can we uh, find a way, a magic bullet, to target this intrinsically disordered protein, P53, that we can then use for elimination of senescent cells <coughs> and in the end also to treat age-related diseases. So let's look at P53 um, first. So that's the domain organization of P53 representation that we use very much in, in structure biology. In uh, 2018, we actually found out that the region in P53, which is important for keeping zombie cells alive, is exactly within this disordered region. So how can we actually target a disordered spaghetti? Well, nothing easier than that. We bind it to a meatball. <laughs> Some of you might look uh, skeptical, so I have to admit it's, it's a falafel, so it's not a meatball. Um, but it's not the only, only problem. Um, the only problem back then was that uh, it was a common sense in structure biology that intrinsically disordered proteins are undruggable. Actually, um, we were lucky back then and we found the right meatball to target this intrinsically disordered protein, so it has an interesting name, um, CL04183, and it's even binding so tight that it does not fall off uh, easily from this disordered protein. So now the real challenge is to find the proper meatball. There is uh, different ways, for example, antibodies which can be used um, to achieve a similar task. Now we have reached the stage where we have a compound and our collaborators in Utrecht then uh, test this compound in cells and indeed they eliminate senescent cells. It even works in, in mice, so you can eliminate efficiently uh, senescent cells from an aging mouse model and rejuvenate the mouse. So you see then the mouse uh, running around again. And it even comes to the point where you can use this compound now for cancer therapy. So we are now moving along with this compound towards, uh, towards the clinic and I hope I can update you soon on uh, the first results from this uh, endeavor. Now, well, that works with P53. We have been lucky. Now there's an ultimate goal that we have, and that's actually not uh, relying on uh, finding the right meatball, but even more challenging, to find a compound of any arbitrary size that would form the meatball upon uh, finding the target. 
that's even more complicated, um, but also more rewarding because in the end, uh, getting an antibody-sized uh, meatball, for example, into the cell is very difficult and it limits the number of targets that we can approach. So we have first uh, promising results to follow that up and I think also that changing the perspective and having a fantastic team that, uh, that contributes to this is really a key along with all the fancy technologies and the excellent infrastructure that we have here at the Medical Human University of Graz. So I think in the next years we will see many, many exciting results coming out of this, also inspired by uh, new colleagues that joined us um, from, from Canada. So we will push this uh, spaghetti targeting meatball or falafel strategy further in order to prevent new cures for intrinsically disordered proteins and in the end also maybe to delay or even reverse aging. What is also important, I think, in all of these stages that we don't, um, that what was very important for us is that we, that we also train our scientific um, next generation scientists. Thank you.